Conate, a creamy but sliceable quince confection, is first found in Richard II's cookery treatise, Form of Curry, written at the end of the 14th century. Its earliest rendition appears in a palm-sized book penned by the King's scribes and found today in the John Rylands Library in Manchester, England. A very similar recipe, but with a different name, cold lech viand, simply meaning a cold sliced dish, appears in a later 15th century collection of recipes. Unlike other medieval quince confections, which are variations on a theme of quince preserve or jam, Conate is made using wheat aggressa, white fat or lard, and as a consequence is something really quite different. Here you can see me in development mode, experimenting, trying to work out how to adapt this recipe, which has no quantities, ratios or cooking times. However, what the form of curry recipe does say is that the quinces are to be stewed in the white fat. So I slowly cooked my quince pieces in organic leaf lard, a very smooth type of lard made from the fat of the internal carcass of a pig and that doesn't give the conate a porky flavour or smell. Only the best for King Richard. Then I added the other ingredients listed in the recipe. Honey, egg yolks and a little almond milk. For convenience, I used my regular almond drink rather than make up an authentic medieval almond milk. Well, you can put me in a pillory and throw quinces at me later. To spice things up, just a little, I added the final two ingredients from the medieval recipe, saffron and powder fort, a pepper-based spice mix. There's a recipe for it on my website, the link to which is in the video description below. I decided it made sense to blend the stewed mixture until smooth and then spread it into baking trays before cooling it and then chilling it in the fridge. I have to say that my first attempt at conate didn't lead to a readily sliceable texture, but with a careful hand I was able to present to my friends a few days later what passed as a slice of quince creme, which is now what I'm calling my conate. To find out more about conate, check out my related blog posts which has a detailed recipe that you may wish to try for yourself and a suggestion of how it may be eaten. But right now, it's what you've all been waiting for all year, even if you didn't realise it. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Great British Quince Off. With a little Cretan flavour. Uh, hello. Hello, Chris. <laughs> this is a Quince Off. <laughs> Crete is Kidoni. Kidoni, that's Kidoni, right. Yes. And since we're talking about Crete, all of these three things have been made with Cretan quinces or Kidonis. Or they have. Kid yeah. Kidonia. Yeah. The lovely shiny jelly stuff is quince jelly. And what's quince jelly made from? It's made from the quince that have been cooked so they're soft and then you drain them overnight in a bag. <laughs> like a muslin cloth or yes. some cheesecloth or something some like that. Some cheesecloth or something like that. It's called a jam cloth, wasn't it? Yeah. Or a jam yeah. cloth. Yeah. A jam cloth, yeah. 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 And it drains overnight and this is what you collect from them. All right, should we just give it a taste then? I think so. Do you think yeah. this is going to be intensely quincy? Um, mm. I don't think quince is an intense flavour. No, it's not. But that is, that's got, that's really nice. That would be really nice with, with cheese actually. Yes, it's good with That's, cheese. Yeah. Yeah, Lancashire cheese. Yeah, we've actually got some, but it's in the fridge. <laughs> we just wanted to get the pure taste of the quince things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. The one that's not as, um, that's more opaque, this yes. one. What's this then? It's membrillo in Spanish, and yeah. you do get lots of that with things like um, manchengo cheese. Oh, so right. if you if you go for tapas, you, you you quite often get this with manchengo. But it's also called quince cheese. Quince cheese. Quince right. cheese as well, which is more sort of British. And this is the pulp of the quince. Right. Okay. This is what I thought I was going to be making with the medieval recipe, but I was completely wrong, as we'll see in a minute. I think that's more intense. Mm. I can taste more quince in that, because quince yeah. is quite, I think it's mm. a real mix between apple and pear. 
Oh, I like that one. Mm. Because it's actually not as sweet as the jelly. No, it's and not. And you taste the fruit more, don't you? Yes. That's yeah. really nice. Yeah. You're going to be so disappointed when you eat my medieval one. <laughs> <laughs> <It's so laughs> Have I won the Queen's South Chris? I think, I think I'm like, I think I'm like <laughs> two nil down already. Yeah. <laughs> this is just a up. consolation. Yeah. <laughs> but this is actually um, nothing like the other two, really. Okay. If you, if you taste it, it's quite delicate, but it's the ingredients are very unusual, even for a medieval dish. There are um, versions, later versions, where they use quince to make a kind of preserve. It's made using honey, and they really spice it up with loads and loads of pepper. But this has actually got lard in it. I like this. Mm. Um, <laughs> I like this. And it's spice. I feel like you could yeah. do a nice Christmas trifle with it in us. I, I can oh, really, I can really, really it's very smell, Christmassy. I yeah. can really smell quince. Can you? I can smell quince. So because mm. quince does have a real fragrant smell, and that's what you're waiting for when you're growing your quince is waiting for them to get that smell. So that yes, you, yeah, because I, pick I think I should have made mine about two weeks ago when they were at their peak and I think I just let them go over a little bit, but I managed to rescue it. It's, a, it's actually gained a bit, because I made it, where are we? I made it three days ago, mm. and I think the quince flavour's built up a little bit. Yeah, I think- Oh, the peppers, there's yeah. Yeah. Oh, it does it's taste, yeah, it yeah. Taste yeah. It yeah. I can see that as a cheesecake. Well, this is what I was thinking. I was thinking Ooh. I could shove it in some pastry <laughs> or something Ooh, like yes. that, or, or some, M my fee, me yeah. me fee. <laughs> yeah. sort of in between some, you know, like the, you know, like the um, custard, custard, custard slices in, yeah. or yeah. custard tart. That's what I was, Put yeah. Okay, so Paul's come up with one. So <laughs> this goes in the cheesecake, and then you put the quince jelly on mm. the top of the cheesecake. Well, that That's would be nice. fairly intense. Quince overload, but well, that would be good because you've got. In fact, I might try them together. See what they're like. I do like the like the, the spice. Kit, the, the spice mm, it's kit. great, yeah. Isn't it? It's different. So you haven't lost there, Chris. I th I think we have to call it a draw because it's I think draw. I think things are so different. Mm. Mm. But they do work together mm. really well. The jelly and the yeah, yeah. they do, don't they? <laughs> do you know which one I prefer m most though? I think it's this one. Remember, yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah, I do. I think that's, that's great. Really on its own, I think it's. And yeah. if you try that with with, with cheese, yeah. it is it's perfect with cheese, isn't it? It's like, yeah, some of the smoke, kind of slight smoky cheese with it, or mm. some of the mm. shown is, is unreal. We've got some of that as well, and that's yeah. in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you better go and get the cheese out. I better get the cheese out. Yeah, go and get the cheese out. I think we've finished this with cheese. Yes, but I That sounds good. <laughs>